What's going on, everybody? My name is Steven. God damn it, come here. Bugs, man. What's going on, everybody? My name is Steven. You guys are watching the Fowler Airgun Channel. Check it out. We're going to be shooting the Air Force Texan in 457 today. This is a 45 caliber air gun here with a carbon fiber bottle. Has a TX2 valve in it, so it's got a little bit of an upgraded valve. And uh, it's been modified a little bit. This is a hunting platform. Going to be running a red dot on it this year. Hopefully we'll get out there in the woods and we'll be able to shoot us a couple deer with this this year. And uh, going to be running it as light as possible. Going to be running it just like this out in the field, possibly even with no bipod on it. Maybe the sling will go on it, but that's about it. And today I got a really cool video for you all. So today we're going to be shooting this 40 plus, 40 plus some major power here and we're gonna put a smack on this lead plate today we're gonna have a little bit of fun doing it. i'm tired of jumping around editing all these videos and being crazy we're just... this is the air force texan in 457 that is a 45 caliber air rifle big i know producing more than 500 foot pounds of energy okay so this is an absolute beast of a platform when you talk about air guns this is really what got me into air guns was the big bore air gun platform it is just so great to get out and sling these huge chunks of lead out of this and just feel such awesome power so today we're going to be doing just that we're going to destroy this lead plate that i melted down for us today just for this video here this is a 40 plus i want to say my, my wife and i both kind of toyed around this i don't have a scale but we believe this thing to be over 40 pounds so it is hefty okay and uh you know over two inches in some areas on it and we're gonna shoot it today i'm gonna show you what we're gonna shoot it with okay so we're gonna shoot it with some 348 grain knurled hollow point boat tail slugs from nielsen specialty ammo some 290 grain nielsen specialty ammo uh just a flat bottom hollow point a 196 grain nielsen uh, this is a little bit more of a cup bottom slug here. I believe this is a copper jacketed 240 grain. It's a 40 caliber Hornady round here with a ballistic tip on it. So we're going to give that a shot. And then finally we're going to try some, I believe these are 220 grain 45 ACP reload rounds here for a pistol. And we're going to sling them all at this big old fat lead plate. Let's quit talking and get right into it all right everybody so it is time to make some noise out here this is uh this is a pretty loud air gun here and and uh, some of you guys are going to say well you're not even using air protection you're a pro or anything and you know i know and i'm sure i'll regret it but that's my choice so here we are uh 457 air gun and uh we're gonna start actually let's just do this let's start small here 3600 psi so we are topped all the way off up there 3600 psi just a, a hair shy just a hair shy close enough and uh this has the auto safety deleted so you may see me or you are going to see me after i take the shots in order to reset that trigger sear because i i didn't add heavy springs back because i've done a lot of trigger work on this i wanted the trigger pull on this thing to be even greater than already was and I, I couldn't ask for anything better than what I got so uh, you'll see me reset the triggers here by doing that because if I do not then this actually will just not lock into place whatsoever which is kind of a good thing honestly if you ask me I guess if, if just anybody goes to pick this up I don't want them you know you know for any reason somebody that shouldn't have their hands on it this is a good way to prevent anybody that doesn't know what they're doing from knowing what they're doing anyways so that's just a heads up there all right here we go so we got our first round here that we're going to shoot this is going to be the 196 grain this is actually a 454 uh diameter on this so it's not quite the 457 which we got 450 here on this and this is actually 40 caliber but we're going to use a sabo to take up uh, a sabo to take up a little bit of room there inside of the barrel and uh, also it's going to help to uh, keep that co uh, copper from contacting the inside of the, uh, the barrel to rifling there. Since this is an air gun, uh, and this does have a Lothar Walther barrel in it, which is a very tough rifle barrel. However, we're going to try to be as generously nice as we possibly can to it and uh, 
Yeah, the Sabo is really just helping to keep from scarring up that barrel in it because we pretty much just run soft lead through this. Anyways, I'm going to shut up and we are going to blast this lead plate. Alright, so here we go. We are all set for our first shot here. This is 196 grain Nielsen slug. I'm going to go for the very top center of the plate here. And that was a fantastic shot there. And actually, I had some air come back and almost blew my contact clean out of my eye. Now we're going to go ahead off of this next shot here is right at about 3,000 PSI, just a hair over. We're going to go ahead and jump into this 290 grain Nielsen slug here. And then we're going to top back off. And uh, that way we got high power on all of our shots here. So they're fairly consistent with the test. So we can see what this does. Okay, here we go. 290 grain Nielsen slug. And I'm going to try to put it right below. Oh, no. Well, we had an impact that landed inside of there so i may do one more real quick i'll try to spread it out a little bit more here i just didn't want to booger up the plate too bad so now we're at about 20 2700 psi roughly somewhere in that area all right so we know this one's going to dip a little high on it so let me give it a little space I'm going to put this one to the right of it here. Let's see what happens. Beautiful. I should have just done that from the beginning. Okay. And that brought us down to about 2200 PSI. Not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and air this thing back up. And then we'll keep shooting. Alright. Here we go. So there you see it aired all the way back up to a clean even 3600 PSI this time. And now we're going to go ahead and shoot this last soft lead slug here these are designed by uh, Nielsen Special Ammo specifically for the Texan here specifically for air guns and they are it, it's like a piece it's like a work of art it's like chunking a work of art down range almost it's really nice all right so <clears throat> this one I expect to have a slight bit of drop on it I'm going to go to the left of all that mess we got down there on the left side there just to the left of it maybe down a hair and we'll see what we get Okay, so I had to go down there and save the lead plate because I was worried it was going to kind of cut like a wheel and get to rolling down and uh, jump down the mountain down here, which I'd be chasing that for quite some ways, I'd imagine. So anyways, uh, here we go again. Let's see. We're right about a little over 3,000 PSI. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot this 45 ACP reload round at it. So this one is, uh, I believe, 220 grains. And... Uh, it doesn't quite fit the barrel, so it's not going to have as much grab and velocity on it as we would like some of these slugs to have, or that they do have. So the test is a little bit uh, not weaning towards these these jacketed rounds because obviously they're not made for air guns. But uh, we're still going to shoot them anyways and just see what they do. Okay, so I'm not really sure where this one's going to go, but it can't go too far out of the way. Let's just go below... Let's go on the, the left side here, below the last shot, and see what happens. Good, good hit. And I actually just saw something moving right over here by these logs. I'm not sure if that was maybe part of the copper jacket or something went shooting off. Alright, so now we're at 20, about 2800 PSI roughly. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and take this last shot on that power actually. I don't believe that's going to be... Oh, what am I doing here? See? Novice mistake. I don't have a sabo here. So, I'm going to be using this... I believe this is a uh, 240 or 220 grain ballistic tip here. And uh, we're just going to take these sabos here. This is going to fill up some of that diameter so it gives it good contact. Get out of here, mosquito. So it gives it good contact inside of that barrel, but not contact with the actual projectile itself. All right, so here we go. Let's take this final shot here. And uh, nice and snug in there. That actually fits very nicely in this barrel here. All right, here we go. Final shot here. 
I'm going to go for a clear point here on the lead plate off on the right side. Final shot. All right, here we go. So this is going to be our final shot here with this Hornady round. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go for uh, the just to the right. Let's go to the right of that last shot. Beautiful. And I actually feel like I see the round stuck in the lead plate from here. All right, cool. So we just got rid of everything that we possibly can. Actually, I have just one more thing. Okay, so here's what I've done. I went and aired back up real quick to a 3600 PSI fill and grabbed one last thing I'd like to test. This is a 400 grain boat tail hollow point slug here from Nielsen. This is a huge, heavy chunk of lead, 400 grains, and we are going to sling it 3600 PSI out of this lead plate and see what happens in comparison to some of those copper jacketed rounds we got down there all right let's see i'm gonna aim for the clean spot at the very bottom below all that and we'll see what we get here here we go nice solid shot and that thing had much more recoil on it all right now to the favorite my favorite part let's go check out this lead plate all right so i've got our lead plate here for us let's take a look at it because what I see is very interesting. All right. So, our first shot we took was right up here at the very top. That was with a 196 grain Nielsen slug. But then one of our 290 grains dipped right into just about the same hole. Now, something that I found out that's just really interesting is that this lead plate here, when I cast it, somehow formed a bubble here on this back side and it's almost like it's kind of hollow down in that side so i don't want to jip anybody and i don't believe this plate is just hollow all the way through like that but what i want to do is i want to actually just reshoot this real quick with the 196 grain slug and the 290 grain slug and see if we can get us some solid hits here on the bottom where the plate is clean but for the rest of the rounds let's take a look so if you look here this was our 348 grain boat tail slug and you can just see that that thing really buried itself down in there a good ways and right here this does not look like it does down in this cavity here where it looks a little hollow inside this actually looks like a much more solid part and look how incredibly far down that got in there now that's a pretty heavy slug 348 grains here's our next slug right here which was i believe that was another 196 grain slug right there i believe we moved the shot over and redid it right there and then we have this shot was our 45 acp reload which actually to me made probably the most impact out of all of these i will be honest with you that before i get too far ahead though is the 400 grain boat tail slug that we just shot and that thing is so deep down in there and it just has a bulge on the back side of it now here where that thing was just I mean, it was putting out a lot of power there. That there is our uh, Hornady round, our ballistics round. And now, I'm getting tired of holding this stupid big block of lead up. This big old plate of lead. I really want to see if I can't possibly get some of these rounds out of here. I'm more interested in getting out this Hornady round than anything because I really want to see the ballistic tip and what it did. Oh, nice. This is really cool stuff. Hopefully you all can see this here. Let's see. All right, so. That's our ballistic hornady round there. The tip, obviously smashed up completely flat. And 
this thing actually mushroomed way more than I thought it was going to so it expanded quite a bit and uh, the copper jacketing actually the majority of it stayed in place and uh, it was expanding with it as well you got a nice good bit that retained in the back end there probably about a quarter of the actual projectile itself but over overall I think that's really really cool stuff there and uh, it goes to show you too let's take a look at this uh, size of this lead plate here the reason why I keep putting these gloves on is because I just melted this plate down here and it's you touch all over it your hands will just turn straight gray anyways that is a nice wall up in that lead plate right there right there from that Hornady round let's see if I can get this uh 45 ACP reload out of here this one is looking like it's going to be quite a bit more difficult yep yep this one is in there guys the copper jacketing is wanting to come off of it some but I can't I just I can't even peel that away from the walls here there's just nowhere real good that it's uh getting behind the projectile it's really really in there I mean that's full that's almost my body weight right there wow you know I gotta be honest with you I don't think that there's many rounds I've ever been able to not pull out of the uh the old lead plate here wow even this round here has really sunk in there well it looks like I just made a really good lead plate that's probably what it is anyways i'm gonna go get this set back up now and we're gonna try to take two more shots at this real quick just so we can call it fair and square we're right at 3,000, just a hair over 3,000 psi here and we're gonna redo these the first two shots actually uh just to make it fair so this is a 196 grain slug here we're gonna start out with this one first and i'm gonna try to put this one on the left side top left side of the plate here beautiful all right now let's go ahead and load this next round this is our 290 grain Nielsen hollow point slug here and then let's see what happens just to the right of that hopefully we can keep it clean on the edge of the plate but I think it's on there let's have a look at it now all right so we redid our last two shots here, just to call it fair and square. 196 grain, 290 grain. Now, you can obviously see that that 196 grain slug dug in there pretty well, probably because it was moving a bit faster. Uh, but if you look at the splash from the 290, it's made a much larger crater in there. So, what did we learn from today's video? Well, I don't know, probably absolutely nothing. Well, maybe a little bit. Shooting lead plates is awesome. Shooting lead plates with big bore air guns is even more awesome. And uh, it's just a whole lot of fun. And I really appreciate you guys getting out here and checking out this video with me today. I wanted to bring you guys some content that I haven't brought to you in a while. I haven't shot the lead plate in quite some time. And I had a couple of things that I really just wanted to try on the lead plate here. And I'm glad I got it out there for you all. So. This is the platform that I will be using to shoot at some deer this year. I'm going to be running it just like this. Maybe without the bipod on it. Possibly have a sling on it, but uh, this is going to be pretty much it here. So, really shooting the lead plate has nothing to do with shooting deer. Uh, I guess, to some extent, it can show you a little bit about ballistics. But because we're not shooting a lead deer, uh, it just doesn't co you know, just doesn't, just doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just for fun. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Just out here goofing off and uh, really just enjoying shooting my air gun. My big bore air gun specifically because every once in a while you just you get that hair, that monkey on your back. And you just got to get out and you just got to feel the power. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you got any questions or comments, anything you want to see me do, leave a comment below. And I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. Read your comment and... Uh, you know plan do some future planning on some videos with you all if you guys have ideas let me know what you guys want to see because it's kind of hard i can't read your minds from over here anyways i hope you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you do subscribe if you want to see more from this crazy old circus and as always i'll see y'all on the next one